Hey guys, so uh, my name is Steven, and this is Rita, and um, we are open source engineers at Microsoft from Augie, San Francisco. And um, so we came here today because we heard that um, you guys might have heard of Docker, and we kind of do things with Docker, but as well as um, a lot of open source things. Uh, I think our next slide, so um, we, we uh, call ourselves open source engineers, and it's kind of weird because like, what does that mean? And so Reed and I work every day essentially to uh, do a little bit different than what our product teams have done. So if you notice, Microsoft loves open source. Like we've you know, turned 180. I don't know, I hear, I hear lots of laughs, but um, <laughs> that's why we're paid full time to convince you otherwise. <laughs> so um, the point is, is that uh, we spend every day um, with, uh, so a lot of people might think that open source is just uh, a release job. You release the newest version of Docker, you release the newest version of .NET, you do all these things and you go ahead and put up GitHub and you call it a day. But our team is really about collaboration and contributions with the community. And so that's what we're going to talk about a lot today. And um, we're going to talk about a few of the collaborations that we've done within the Docker ecosystem and how that might be cool and might be interesting for yourself as well. Am I talking about this one too? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I hope these numbers are right. It might be more now. So it might, it might be um, unbeknown to you, but we have about 1,100 open source repositories of just code, of things that we open source. Most notably are things like Objective-C for Windows, um, things like the .NET runtime for framework, all that stuff. You can run an actual .NET cross platform app. You don't necessarily have to just do mod. Um, there's a lot of other cool things, too, that we um, open source from Azure, and a lot of things that help make Azure and Windows a lot easier for the .NET community. So, um, and 160,000 forks just shows the kind of the, uh, the contributions and the, how we're trying to really contribute with the community and encourage community members to contribute as well. Yeah, and, and as Stephen mentioned, um, you know, we spend most of our time on GitHub and we literally look at all the uh, projects and see which one has a, a lot of stars. Um, and then basically look at where, where our developers have issues and um, when we work a lot also with um, startups because they're also using a lot of open source and they're contributing back to open source. Um, so we really want to make sure that um, also internally that, that we educate um, our product groups that GitHub and, and open source is not just a release channel, but it's where also we get to collaborate with really smart engineers across the world. Um, and this is also where we get to release um, our products early and often and work with developers um, around the world and identify issues and look at the issues and, and do pull requests and, and solve the problem. So by a quick show of hands, how many people have submitted a pull request to open source projects? Pulse, about 50%. So we're not talking to the, you know, strangeness. Cool. Oh, Rita, the sign. Where is it? Uh, oh, oh, there's a graphic that we spent a whole like 10 minutes trying the to crash. The crash. Uh, the crash. Yeah. Later this year, so I can't really tell or 
demo or tell you more about it, but um, that kind of gives you the level of how we're embracing that. And we're also embracing Docker, how um, Docker is like the first class you know, container service on Windows or container technology. Right, and, and um, we're also working with the Apache Mesos community to, to make sure um, we leverage a lot of the scheduler and the framework that Mesos com comes with so that as a developer you essentially can run, um, you know, Go applications or um, Kubernetes if you want to or um, build your own framework um, and all that is cloud agnostic. Um, so today you can also uh, basically spin up your own Docker Swarm cluster on Azure and it's very simple to do. Um, pretty much just a couple of clicks and a few minutes you get a nice beautiful swarm cluster. Um, and you can also run Docker Compose, um, basically all the goodness that comes with Docker. Um, it also works on Azure. Yeah, so that's all the collaborations uh, that we've just done. So we actually worked with Docker, like Docker Docker in San Francisco to kind of make that happen. Um, and actually what we're just going to talk about next is uh, our collaboration with Dev Engine Yard with Deus. Um, how many of you guys heard of Deus before? Of you guys. Great. So essentially, what we have done is we worked with uh, Deus, which is like our little group, Hacon, but open source. So you can launch it anywhere. That's all the conversation for you, but it's super, super high level, which is awesome. You don't have to worry about it. But the point is, is that we actually uh, you know, went out, worked with a few of the Deus support contributors to contribute back to Deus and also our Azure engineering teams to kind of flush out some of those issues that we've seen between the two. Uh, on our Azure side as well as contributing back to Deus to make it work and also documentation so that um, you could use it. And even so much so that we actually helped, if you look on Deus' website, you see Democracy OS, that was one of the companies that we worked with to actually get it working on Azure uh, when it first started off. And they're actually Y Combinator uh, winner of 15 company. And super cool guys and they you know, kind of took bet on us. So, um, and what they wanted to do um, is essentially um, make sure that their solution works across uh, for different customers, but without having to rewrite the application over and over. And so this is where they leverage Deus and Docker to basically spin up new instances of the, their solution for a uh, for any customer. Yeah, like WordStack, Word, WordPress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to basically jump into uh, demo really quickly. Um, yeah, that was it. That was the one that, was that totally we wanted to use. That was it, right? Something special. You can give away our secret. <laughs> so I just want to point out really quickly, you saw the baby was embracing? Yeah. That was on purpose. Yeah. Um, so this is basically a um, ReviewJS um, application that is running on top of Deus. Um, so what is Deus? Um, so I, as a developer, I personally really like Deus because any of you who's ever used Heroku is essentially an open source um, private Heroku where you can run it either on, on premises or on your uh, cloud of choice. Um, and it's a pass where you can, uh, that allows your developers to create applications, deploy tests, um, and all within their own control so that they don't have to bother the, the ops guys. And, and uh, as the ops guy, you don't have to get uh, annoying phone calls to, to help debug an application or spin up VMs for your uh, developers. So it's a very nice uh, platform that enables your developer to develop applications. Um, and what we like about it is that it's 100% open source. It has a really big community um, about, this is probably old already, but 20, uh, 2,800 stars. Um, and it's, again, focused on the, uh, the 12 factor apps. So for those of you who use Heroku or any other open source pass, um, it's essentially the methodology that we want developers to follow. Um, and it is a very nice open source platform that integrates with the other open source ecosystem. So like I said earlier, um, it is built on top of CoreOS um, and it works with, uh, and on top of CoreOS <coughs> there is Docker. So essentially anytime you push an application, it is, um, it is running in a Docker container. And it's actually uh, smart enough because it, it's, again, like Heroku, that it uses um, like Heroku build packs, such that when you push your application, it's smart enough to know, okay, this is a Node.js application, therefore I'm gonna spin up a container specifically to run a Node.js application. 
Um, and they can also uh, run uh, the Docker image, or if you already have the Docker image on the Docker registry hub, uh, Docker hub, then you can actually pull an image down. And this is smart enough to run it um, in that in your DS cluster. So what does this mean for me as a developer? Um, well, it pretty much means that you have the key to the kingdom. Um, and as a developer, I am happy to say that I like the full autonomy of creating applications, configuring my code, um, configuring, uh, re manage my releases, and being able to do rollbacks without <laughs> following the ops guys. Um, and, and I'm able to look at the logs um, and scale my applications with a couple of key commands. So, um, so it's very, very easy and makes me a happy developer. And we all want happy developers, right? That's true. Um, so, um, this is all great, but let, like, how does that all work? Um, and then from a developer, how do I actually use JS? Well, um, the application, the, the site that you're looking at right, right now is actually running on a DS cluster. Surprise! Um, so, <laughs> uh, so this little guy is basically running on um, Azure, and I was able to spin up a three-node DS cluster by running these commands. Um, and of course, you can look at this on, on our blog or um, follow the DS documentation. So we get high availability for this presentation slides, just in case. Yeah, just in case, like anybody who wants to look at it, yeah. like, and it's down, you know, in that way. So again, if you just follow these steps, and you can basically spin up a nice uh, core OS cluster on Azure in within less than five minutes. Um, and then, and then basically, DS is smart enough to um, uh, build out the DS cluster. And so what I would like to do is basically show you guys, um, as a developer, what does that mean for me, right? So again, so side by side right now, I'm running two instances of the same application. And I'm able to uh, spin up a different application, a, a different uh, application in DS, and I'm, I can actually inject environment variables. So as you can see down here, um, I know this might be kind of, let me just bring it up. So here, um, here's how you can actually tell Deus, okay, for, for this environment variable, um, I want to uh, set, uh, sorry about that, what was it? So uh, this, what she's basically showing is that um, the cool part about this is, remember this is like really good for like work stuff, WordPress style deployments. So imagine you have like an e-learning system or what Democracy OS did was a platform where a group of people can vote for things. And you can go to democracyos.com and you can say, hey, I want you to host a Democracy OS instance for me. And they'll go off and do it for your organization. So if you're University of California, for example, and you say, oh, I have like, there's not one University of California, but like say you're University of Berkeley, and you can say, okay, well, I want a Berkeley Democracy OS, and you can customize the application using things like app-specific environment variables, say that you need to point to a specific Postgres instance or a MongoDB instance. You would just use that to set it. So what Rita's doing is just setting a very, very simple um, thing in this app, which is just the title of the presentation. Right, so this of. is, again, a, a new instance of the same app, essentially. Um, and as you can see here, the title is Embrace and Docker at Microsoft. And then in this new instance, um, I haven't set the title yet, but as soon as Deus um, is done. Um, well, I'll assume that. Can you, you can show up the uh, portal and show like, all the components. Oh, yes. This, this, Actually, totally, that's like, this um, totally just yeah. translates so, into that, right? Right, exactly. So earlier, um, we mentioned that uh, you basically run through these lovely commands. Um, and once you're done, um, this is this is the Azure portal where um, Azure is basically smart enough to spin up all these nodes and load balancers and creating public IPs for you. And all that is done in less than five minutes. Um, so it's very, very uh, simple. Um, okay, so, we're, so this is done. Um, so, so this is, again, the new instance of our application. Um, I just injected this lovely variable here. Um, so this is just to demonstrate that you can basically very quickly spin up new instances of your application by injecting environment variables. Yeah, um, it just abstracts the whole testing. Exactly. 
And um, last but not least, but I also want to show that the, the really what's really lo lovely about data is that you can actually look at your um, releases, and so that you can say if you want to go back, you can totally do that. Um, so let's say. Uh, We see that we just, like, you know, um, we created our new title, right? So if I want to go back uh, to V2, uh, is going to do that, and then that title will just basically go away. Um, and while this is running, uh, Deus can also uh, scale for you so that you can basically say, you know what? Um, Three of containers isn't enough because we have a lot more people hitting our site. So I'm just going to quickly uh, make sure that I have like three uh, web, uh, web components running at the same time. So this is basically me telling Deus, please go ahead and spin up more. Uh, so while this is We're watching grass grow. <laughs> but um, while this is running, I guess we could probably hit our last slide. And, uh, yeah. Oh, you're showing them like, ah, good luck. So we put like a circle around that guy to make a certain square, but here we go. Okay, I'll write that down. Anyways, um, so we got uh, CoreOS, like a lot, so basically we have lots of stuff uh, that, we've, that we've got working, or we've uh, integrated partner with, with different companies to, uh, within the Docker ecosystem, to work at Azure, essentially. Um, by the way, has anybody heard of Azure? Um, you know, it's really <laughs> terrible, right? Now, I'm, I'm setting the standard low here, it's, it's really bad. But um, cool, I got like, I think I got like a third of the room, that's great. Uh, but anyways, the point is is that um, the whole reason why we're here and why we're out is to show that we're open and how our things like Azure works with the things that you might not expect to. We still have people today that think that we don't even run Linux. And that's really, really bad, right? So the point is is that um, it's a lot to talk about and we don't really have to go through all these things, but we have like CoreOS images, our first class, Cloud Foundry is on Azure, and I think they just recently announced uh, Docker support on their schedulers. Um, but, you know, we've also done a lot of things with Docker, Docker Compose, Docker Machine, as well as like Windows containers, which is really cool. Uh, Mesosphere, DCOS on Azure, as well as uh, Kubernetes on Azure. So, it's a lot of cool stuff there. And uh, unless I need to keep speaking, I think those things should probably then. There you go. This is our other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Anyways, uh, long story short, you can look at us, look us up on GitHub. Uh, you know, shoot us a star or two for random things. That'd be cool. You can also look at our public activity and see what we're up to. We work on lots of different fun things. And um, are you, uh, are you, is the grass growing thing done? Or? Uh, yeah. If it's not, it's not a big deal. I'm pretty sure everybody believes us. Yeah. Unless you don't. Uh, oh, what? What's going on? Turn on, turn on, turn on, turn on. Anyway, let's go right. to the question. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> uh, question time. Has anybody got any questions? Oh, yeah, not one. All right, cool. Yeah, good. Oh, there we go. Uh, by the way, very impressed with the live demos. Uh, yeah, see? Oh, it's all the work. Very, very impressive. Yeah, very brave, you. very brave. <laughs> uh, question. Uh, nothing else. I think nothing else. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, so hopefully this won't make you sweat too much, but um, I only just sort of got familiar with Docker in the last couple of weeks, and my first attempt was on Windows, um, and it was a bit of a non-starter because you need hardware back virtualization because Docker is 64 bit only. So my question is: Is the Microsoft embracing Docker story all based on CoreOS or Linux distributions, or is Microsoft at all considering trying to make Docker a Windowsy thing, and you even mentioned uh, Windows containers. So what, what, what's sort of going to be my question? Um, so both, right? So um, the reason why we're interested in making it a Windows thing as well, and we're embracing it. We're not saying it is a Windows thing, but we're embracing it because um, it's it's the way of the future, right? It's to modernize our, our platform, even. Our Windows distributions running Windows are not like the Windows that you see. It's not a UI server. <coughs> it's headless, right? We even announced microserver. And those types of things we're trying to modernize for the enterprise companies, especially those that are already running like Windows Server, 
and would like to have more agile stacks like Linux without having to move things, traditional applications that they might be using, think about SharePoint, things like that. Um, you don't want to actually you know, change from Windows shop, especially if your developers are all used to developing for Windows. So really, it's a, a strategy for us to appeal to, the, to our already existing customer base by bringing innovations from the Linux stack over to Windows. It's not really changing it or anything like that. If it was a little difficult, it is new. So I would totally like take that into account as well as I personally haven't done um, Docker containers on Windows just yet, um, just because it is quite it is quite new and it's not a and I'm in Silicon Valley, so it's not very common. Um, but it totally works. If you want to follow up with me afterwards, uh, I can you know probably connect with the right person. Cool. I've got a question. Uh, how, how do we follow up? How do you follow up with us? Yeah, exactly. Well, there, there you go. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. These are difficult names to spell. Mine's really awkward, but uh, that's my GitHub handle and Facebook. Or not Facebook. Uh, Great. Uh, Twitter. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Well, thanks for having us, guys. We really appreciate it. We came all the way from San Francisco and thought we'd stop by Sydney and, you know, for tears, five more guns. So. Well, thanks for listening.